It's hard to believe that the big green was unleashed onto the gaming world 20 years ago, but it has, and it started a legacy that, while not as fondly remembered as its future console offspring would be, did start a few franchises that have withstood the test of time. Without a doubt, the most beloved of all these IPs is Halo. Released along with the Xbox on November 15, 2001, Halo Combat Evolve, as it was known, ended up being on the biggest selling launch games list, next to Project Gotham Racing and Dead or Alive 3. Not only that, it became the flagship title for the system, the reason to buy an Xbox. Hell, my friends used to jokingly call it the Halo TV adapter. Of course, it's been 20 years, and Halo has sort of pun intended, evolved into a major franchise, complete with sequels, spin-off games, and other forms of media. But what about the original game? Has it withstood the test of time? Come on, we all know the answer to that one, but hear me today as we take a Viridian flashback look at Halo Combat Evolved, just in time to celebrate the Xbox's 20th anniversary. Now, I'm pretty sure anyone watching this knows the story of Halo, but for those who missed out the first go-round, here's a brief summary. The starship Pillar Bottom warps out of slipspace and is being chased by an aggressive alien force known as the Covenant. With no choice but to evacuate, the ship's captain, Keys, entrusts the Autumn's AI named Cortana to Master Chief, an augmented super-soldier known as a Spartan, to protect her from the Covenant. Master Chief then evacuates onto an orbiting ring-like structure while Keys crash lands the ship onto the surface. From there, what seems to be a standard rescue mission for the other survivors turns into a startling discovery of a dark plot that only Chief can stop. As you play through Halo, it's apparent that Bungie was inspired by several classic sci-fi films, namely the Alien franchise, but it still crafts its own unique tale, even if Master Chief is more of a placeholder for the player. At least for now. Thankfully, Cortana is there to give Chief a link to humanity so he doesn't come off as a complete husk. At first glance, Halo looks like any other shooter and, for the most part, it pretty much is. You go through each stage, mowing down aliens to reach your checkpointed goal, using a variety of weapons, both of human and covenant design. The big draw to this is that this game is on a console. Now, while there have been many first-person shooters on numerous consoles during the mid-90s up to Halo's release, the one that many reference as the best of that time was GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64. None could really surpass what Rare brought to the table. Until now. Er, uh, er, then. Uh, you know what I mean. Halo perfected console FPS controls with a smooth layout that was easy for anyone to pick up and play. Instead of scrolling through all the guns and grenades you picked up, Cheap can only carry two weapons and three of each grenade, regular frag style and the fantastic sticky plasma grenade. While there are health packs scattered across the game to refill your meter, you have a shield that can absorb some of the blows which can regenerate if you're left alone for a few seconds. It's a handy trick that would be used in shooters for years and years to come, even going so far as to replacing finding health packs, even in future Halo games. Another wonderful tool at your disposal in Halo is vehicles, ranging from the trusty Warthog and Scorpion tank to the Covenant Banshee and Ghost, each having some form of offensive capability. Now, vehicles and shooters were nothing new prior to Halo, but again, what makes them fantastic here is the controls. Accelerating and reverse are handled with the left analog stick, while turning is all done with the right. This scheme makes for easy operation and smooth handling. Like I said, the overall controls for Halo are just very well done, allowing for anyone to pick up and play, getting the hang of everything in a short time. Hell, back when Mrs. Popka and I started dating, she played Halo for the first time and, well, it kind of went something like this. But in no time, it became more like this. It really is just a fun game to pick up, which leads into the main reason people played this game for hours on end, the multiplayer. Along with being able to play the campaign in split-screen co-op, Halo allows for four-player deathmatch, where you and a few friends partake in shooting the hell out of each other in five different modes, like deathmatch, capture the flag, and so on, with each mode hosting a ton of customization options to create your own unique spin on things. Sadly though, Halo was released before Xbox Live was up and running, so to get the most use out of those large maps, Halo allowed system link play for up to 16 players, Meaning if you had a LAN adapter, four TVs, four Xboxes, and 
or copies of the game, well, you're in luck. This would coin the term LAN parties among Xbox players, resulting in some of the most fun nights you could have back then, myself being a part of a few of them. On the presentation side of things, Halo looks great, for a big green launch title. The areas you traverse range from lush greenery to ancient temples and even alien architecture. While the character models range from creative, in the case of the Covenant and other enemies, to the iconic look of Master Chief, to the average look of everyone else. Has time been kind though to Halo's visuals? Eh, not as much, but I'll get to that in a bit. Moving on to audio, the score is phenomenal with a wonderful soundtrack penned by Martin O'Donnell and Michael Salvatore, who would pen the scores for the rest of the Bungie-developed Halo titles, with this game's intro theme, appropriately called Halo, being the most iconic. As for voice acting, while Chief doesn't say much, when he does speak, it's well done, thanks to the acting of Steve Downs, who would voice the character for every game after Halo. Same goes for his partner Cortana, voiced by Jen Taylor. That terminal, try there. You all right? Never been better. You can't imagine the wealth of information. The knowledge, so much, so fast. It's glorious. So, what sort of weapon is it? What are you talking about? Let's stay focused. Halo, how do we use it against the Covenant? This ring isn't a cudgel, you barbarian. It's something else. Something much more important. The Covenant were right. This ring, it's Forerunner. Give me a second to access. Yes, the Forerunner built this place, what they called a fortress world, in order to... No, that can't be. Oh, those Covenant fools. They must have known. There must have been signs. Slow down. You're losing me. The Covenant found something. Buried in this ring. Something horrible. And now, they're afraid. Something buried? Where? The Captain. We've got to stop the Captain. Keys? What the are we... weapons cache he's looking for. It's not really... We can't let him get inside. I don't understand. There's no time. Get out of here. Find Keys. Stop him. Before it's too late! I had avoided covering Halo for a long time because I didn't know what to really say about it that the massive ocean known as the internet hasn't already said. I didn't want to talk about the history of the game because there's way better videos about that out there and I didn't want to do a straight up review like I normally do because, well, it's Halo. You probably know everything about it and have made your own opinions on it. What I can say though is that Halo is one of those games that may be everywhere in the gaming world today, but it had an impact on my life in my late teens to mid twenties. It brought old friends together, it became something for a future husband and wife to bond over, it became a way to meet new people and forge new friendships. For me, Halo was more than a game, it became a part of my life. Of course, unless you're going for a big green collection and you probably got this one first since, well, there's so many copies of it, playing Halo on the original Xbox really isn't worth it these days. Mostly due to the wonderful remake Halo Anniversary that was released on Xbox 360 in 2011 that not only beefed up the visuals but allowed online co-op and multiplayer. Going a step further than that, this remake was bundled with the rest of Bungie's Halo games as part of the fantastic Master Chief Collection for Xbox One, and now Windows and the new Xbox Series consoles, giving those new to the franchise a much easier way to jump in and play. It's hard to believe that it's been 20 years since Halo and the Big Green fell into the gaming world and just how big those names have become. I mean, hell, next month Halo Infinite will finally be here. And while I'm not sure how it'll be yet, one thing is for certain. I'll never forget the day my friends and I all got together on November 15th, 2001 to turn on the Xbox and play this new shooter that just came out with it called Halo. So there you go, Halo on Viridian Flashback. It was bound to happen eventually, but I figured, you know, what better time to do it than this year? So, uh, yeah, that's in the books. As for Halo 2, well, maybe I'll do that for its 20th anniversary. We'll see what happens. But until then, as always, this is the Dolly Popka saying, stay green, my friends, and happy birthday, Xbox. I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed this episode and want more of me and the Big Green, then click that subscribe button and the bell to get notified when new content arrives. I want to say a special thank you to my patrons for helping not just the channel grow, but me as a creator. You have my forever thanks. If you're interested in the channel and would like to help it grow further, consider becoming a patron today. For the cost of a soda or an item on the dollar menu, you can help myself and the channel provide the best source of big green programming and more. Once again, all the thanks and love.